Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and all the crafting I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta. How are you? It is July 15th as I'm recording this podcast and finally, finally in Edmonton, we are having some summer weather. We had a super rainy spring with lots of thunderstorms, which is pretty normal. That can definitely happen around here. But finally, we're having hot summer weather. And today I am wearing my outline tank. It's the first of two outline tanks that I made out of Kelborn Woolens Mojave. Um, and I just love these for hot days. They're super comfortable and cool. And I wash them and dry them in the machine. So they're very low maintenance. Um, how are you? What have you been getting up to? Uh, the last time I talked to you was the beginning of July and we were getting ready to sort of settle in to a relaxing summer and we're definitely doing that around here. I have two teenage daughters and they are not up before noon most days, <laughs> um, which is fine. They sort of deserve a rest after the busy school year. We're still busy with soccer. Both of my girls um, have had successful soccer seasons and they're both going to provincials. Um, those provincial competitions will be next weekend in a town not too far from here. And uh, that will give me an opportunity to knit. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but when I think about my kids' activities, it's usually what am I going to knit while I'm sitting watching them doing whatever it is that they're doing. I like to pick something plain that I don't have to watch um, so I don't have to look at my hands to see what I'm doing. And so I will let you know what my plans are. There is a little squirrel right outside my window. Obviously my dog's asleep right now, otherwise he'd be barking at said squirrel. Um, so let me tell you what I've been getting up to. I have not finished much of anything in the last couple of weeks. And maybe that's just summer setting in. Um, I was sort of, I, I didn't have a lot of knitting plans for a while there, but my knitting mojo and my knitting mm, energy has returned with passion. So I'd love to show you what I've been getting up to. I've knit my July dishcloth. <laughs> I'm still, I have been keeping up with the year of dishcloths. It's super easy to keep up with because it does not take long to knit a dishcloth. And it's sort of a nice pause in your regular knitting just to, to pick up some yarn and to knit something small. And I've been working through some dishcloth cotton that has been in my stash for quite some time. So that's great. Um, here is the July pattern. This is the Mysterious Affair at Styles. So this year, all of the um, dishcloths are based on uh, literary themes. Sometimes it's a character from a literary book. Um, the first few were sort of um, childhood favorites of mine, um, but now we're getting into um, some Agatha Christie. So this is based on the Myster Mysterious Affair at Styles. I knitted in some Estelle Suds which is a very economical colorway. And this, this colorway is actually called Candy Cane, but um, it reminded me a lot of Canada Day and Canada Flags and the red and white and strawberry shortcake. Um, so I used it for my July dishcloth. So that's done and it was a quick knit. Um, as I said, my girls have been playing a lot of soccer and so I cast on a plain pair of socks to knit while I cheered them on. And I, have uh, one almost sock to show you. Um, I had I was using the leftovers of my Vespa socks that I knit earlier in the spring. And so I have one sock tube with no heel yet. I still have to decide what kind of heel I want to pop in these socks. And then I have the very beginnings of another sock, just a few stripes. This has been living in my purse for when I am out and about going places with my kids um, or myself. <laughs> and I just haven't had much time to work on this pair of socks, but that's okay. Um, I sort of have a plan to give them to a friend of mine, but there's no rush and it'll be done when they're done. I, uh, I don't know. I always like to have some plain socks on the needles and these ones will just sit and wait until I have some spare time or a soccer tournament um, to knit on them. So those are my second pair of Vespa socks. I have also been working on my inclinations cowl, but I have a bit of a tale of woe. I don't know why I thought that I could make two cowls out of this, out of two um, skeins of DK yarn. I was seriously mistaken. 
um, I had been working on this um, shawl or cowl and it was going along really well. Um, but I found that I was running out of yarn. So let me just, let me just show you how this, how this works up. So you cast on down here and you sort of work a triangular shape to a point. So this, the beginning part is a triangle. And then on one side, you stop making increases. So this is just straight. And on the other side, the increases continue. So this side kind of stays in the same triangular shaping. And this one is, cast, is sort of um, remains the same. So there's no more increases on that side. And then you get to a point where you start decreasing on this triangular end, instead of increasing, now you start decreasing. And the way that this cowl is constructed, the end that you're decreasing on, so this little end that I'm working on right now, gets folded back on the beginning edge of this triangle, and it will be seamed up like this. So you can see, um, sort of just the shape of it coming together. Now I had to do, um, I have to keep decreasing until this piece gets to here. And I had made this too wide and I wasn't gonna have enough yarn. I still don't have a ton of yarn left, but my plan is to just to keep decreasing until I'm close, if not there, and then um, do the bind off and seam it up. So I may have to fudge it a bit at the end. I'm really hoping I don't, but apparently very, very mistaken as to how much yarn this little cowl would take up. But I am liking it. I like my color choices. I'm using some comfy, cozy yarns. Is that the right side or the wrong side? Nope, that's the right side. I'm using comfy, cozy yarns. The sort of deep burgundy color is called Sangria and the multicolored or variegated yarn so sangria, and this a variegated one is called spooked. Um, and they're really knitting up uh, really nicely together and I'm liking the effect. Um, I just need to finish it. And I was a little disappointed because I had made such great progress um, before I admitted to myself that I was gonna have to frog it back um, and salvage more yarn. <clears throat> so I basically took it back a couple, like from if this is where I was at, and then working the decreases, I moved it down maybe an inch or two, um, knowing that this will stretch a bit and will definitely fit around my face, just like that, um, and get seamed up. So this is my Inclinations cowl. It is coming along. It had a bit of a setback, but I'm back on track. And that has been some nice evening knitting for me. I've also been working on my Ornata blouse. This is a blouse by Teti Lutzak. I believe that's her name. She is a Ukrainian designer who is currently living in the Netherlands. I think she lives just outside of Amsterdam. And uh, the last time I had made some progress, but not very much, and it was very bunched up. It's still kind of bunched up, but I have made more progress and it's starting to look like a sweater. So as you can see, um, I think it looks, you're starting to see the shape a bit better. So it's a, a wide neckline. I did a um, long tail cast on. Her option was also to do a provisional cast on, but I felt like a provisional cast on would not allow for the structure to hold the neckline of the blouse where I wanted it. Um, so I did the long tail cast on to keep, give it some strength. Because if you think of how a sweater fit, sits on your body, it all, all of the weight hangs off of this neckline. Um, and would drag it down. So I used the um, long tail cast on to give it some structure. It is still a wide neckline, which I think will be quite pretty. It's very gathered, much like a peasant blouse would be. And then I um, put some um, sleeve stitches on hold and I used my knitting barber cords uh, for the first time and they worked great. But I found that um, I have been using some uh, Lika Cipra needles. These are their copper needle tips because um, I wanted to give them a try and I found that the knitting barber cords, the ends, stick on better. So you just kind of stick it on the end of your knitting needle. I'm going to do this off camera. 
so that I can actually see what I'm doing. So you just sort of stick it on the end like that and then pull it through your knitting um, to put some stitches on hold and they have, they worked great. But I found that when I tried to use these knitting barber cords with uh, my wooden Lika needles, the cords did not stick on as well, probably because the wood is a bit smoother, um, I think. I'm not sure. Let me know if you've had success using the knitting barber cords with wooden needles. I, for me, it didn't work and it could have just been the tips that I was using that day or whatever. But now um, when I tried them using my Lika um, Cipra or the copper tips, um, it worked just great. So I put some stitches on hold, as you can see. And then I've just been working down the body and I've been using helical knitting to try and um, spread out the color changes or the the pooling and I think actually it's it's working really well. The yarn I'm using is Lillian Pine in their I believe it's rose. Let me tell you for sure. Yes, the rose sock base. It is 85 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And in 115 grams you get 420 yards. So 420 yards is sort of a normal length for a uh, sock yarn, but this um, yarn, because it's on 100, because it's 420 yards on 115 grams, I'm finding it's just a bit of a heavier weight sock yarn, kind of beefier, um, and so it's knitting up to about a sport weight, which is perfect for this sweater. So. I have made some progress. I have the sleeves on hold and I'm working down the body. Um, this is very simple knitting because it's just stuck in it for a long time until I do some ribbing at the bottom. Uh, but the helical knitting is keeps me paying attention and also keeps the yarn um, from pooling too much, which I think is really great. I did want to let you know what I thought about these copper tips. I'm really enjoying them. They're, they're not super um, pointy. I don't know if you can see. Um, they're pointy, but not super pointy. And actually for me and for this project, they're working really nicely. Um, I'm not finding that they are, like I, I'm not wishing that they were pointier. And I find that the, the yarn just slips off them really nicely. One comment that I heard was uh, that some knitters find that the copper leaves their hands smelling metallic. Um, which I was a little concerned, not concerned, but I was aware of um, going into it. And I thought, well, I'll just try them out on a project. So I got a couple sets of tips to try. And I have not found that at all. Um, they don't uh, discolor my hands. They don't have not, the needles themselves have not discolored as I work on them. Although maybe in time they will. Um, and they don't leave my hands smelling metallic any more than any other metal needle would. So I've really been enjoying using them actually. I think they're lovely tips. The other thing that I'm trying out is um, with the copper needles, Lika came out with some swivel cords, which means that the needles themselves can swivel, if you can see, I'm just twisting it, swivel on the cord without the cord um, kinking or uh, uh, wrapping itself up, um, kinking maybe is a better word. Um, so, so the needles themselves just swivel on the cord tip and there is a small spot right here where you change the needle tip. And so the needles are quite secure on there, but also have a uh, swivel on the cord, which has been really, really nice, especially as you're working, um, like, a bigger project, it's nice to have the cord sitting where you want it and to be able to manipulate the needles without fighting the cord. Um, so I have to say, I've been really impressed with both the needle tips and the swivel cords by Lika. What other projects do I have on my needles? That's it. I have a pair of socks that I've sort of been picking up and working on at soccer games. I have my cowl, which wah -wah, had a bit of a setback, but it's back on track. And I have my sweater that I'm working on. Um, I have in the last couple of weeks been smitten with my sock machine again. 
Um, since we moved, it has sort of sat in boxes and I haven't just had the time or patience to set it up. But um, a couple of weeks ago, I thought I'll just, I'll just see if I can get this thing going, set up and ready to go. And lo and behold, I have some sock tubes. I, I don't know what it is, but it is so satisfying to just sit and crank out a sock tube. And I'm trying to like ration it <laughs> so that I don't just spend an hour and like crank out all of the sock yarn that I have into tubes. And then I'll have all these tubes that need to be made into socks, but <clears throat> I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> it's just really fun. And I think it sort of satisfies this, uh, a couple of things like, um, it's very satisfying cranking out a tube and just having it done. So it feels like a finished object, even though it's really a half finished object. Cause I still have heels and cuffs and toes to do. Um, but also I just like the tinkering with the machine, especially, I mean, I really like when the machine works well and I don't have to worry about tinkering too much. Um, but I sort of have played with it enough that I have a fairly good understanding of what I need to do if something isn't working. So if it's skipping stitches or if it's being cranky, often it means I have to change, adjust the gauge. Um, and some yarns I find work better than others, but overall I've just been having a lot of fun cranking out socks. Um, so I have a bunch of socks now that need to be, well, sock tubes that need to be turned into socks. But let me show you what I've done just in this last couple of weeks. This is um, the equivalent of three pairs of socks in tube form. The cylinder that I'm currently using has 76 slots in it. So for 76 stitches, and it makes a tube that is about nine inches around. Um, when I measure from here to here, it's about four inches. And my gauge that I'm getting is about seven and a half to eight stitches per inch, fairly consistently. It changes a little bit from yarn to yarn, but that sort of seems to be the sweet spot that my machine likes to do. And that really works well for me because I think that makes a nice size sock. And it certainly fits my husband's foot nicely. So I have made three. <laughs> this is some, um, ooh, I think this is High Tide by Nomadic Yarns. This one is the Bridgerton Boys by Area 51 Knits. And this one is um, Badass Regency Warriors, which is like the ladies of Bridgerton. So there's three sets of socks that will be made into actual socks at some point. Um, I am teaching a class in the fall and I do need some sock tubes to make up some sort of sample socks. So I'll either be using these or some of the smaller tubes that I have um, in stash. <laughs> I'm the kind of person now who has sock tubes in stash. Um, great. Uh, I I'm, have no plans to stop making 76 stitch sock tubes. <laughs> I just I have no idea what has taken over me, but I just love it. It's so satisfying. And so I'm going to have a whole bunch of tubes and at some point I'm going to have to make them into socks. Um, but I'm having fun and I don't see why I should stop. So uh, every couple of days I go through my sock yarn stash and I find some more sock yarn that I think would make great socks for um, people with larger feet. And I set that yarn aside and I wind it up and then it gets cranked into sock tubes. I also have a friend who would like to try and uh, crank out some socks. So I think that um, there will be no end to the sock tubes, at least for now. I do have some plans. Uh, my husband and I have a week off next week. And uh, besides a lot of things around our new home that we have to do, I have plans to um, put together my other sock machine, my 64 stitch sock machine and I am hoping to do a video so I can share with you the process of um, putting together a self 3D printed sock machine if you're interested and then um, hopefully I also would like to share with you how I use my sock machine so um, how I get how I cast on how I crank out a sock tube um, from start to finish. So I'd like to share that with you if you're interested. And then once all of that is done, I would love to share with you how I knit my afterthought heels. Um, I do have some 
really interesting heels that I've been trying out. And one that I, I think I showed you last time, it was like a swirl heel. And I did the swirls um, differently on each sock. So on one sock, all the decreases were knit two togethers. And on the other sock, they were SSKs. And uh, so I, I was quite proud of myself because I thought, well, these are cute when I look at them. And then I tried them on one day when it was cool and boy, they were, they fit so well. I just loved them. And every time I looked at my feet, my toes were like curling towards each other and I just thought it was adorable. So I would love to share that pattern with you if you're interested. Let me know in the, in the comment box below. If you have any questions about my sock machine, I would love to answer them. Or if you have thoughts about um, anything else you'd like to hear about. I have one more thing that I'm going to be casting on today, um, and that is a pair of socks. I know, I'm pretty predictable. Um, the Woolly Thistle, which is a, uh, a woolen shop out of um, the east coast of the United States, they're sort of well known for carrying a lot of British um, and European yarns, specifically more rustic ones that not a lot of other vendors carry. They are hosting a two week sock sprint and you can use any pattern and you can use any yarn and I wanted to take part. So in two weeks, you have to knit um, two socks and they can be, I think they would like you to knit adult socks, but I don't suppose it matters too terribly much. And I thought that I would like to knit some Christmas and July socks. So I have um, some yarn from the Cozy Knitter. This is the 2020 advent calendar. I find that when I knit my advent count, my advent socks from uh, the Cozy Knitter, I can get two socks out of 50 grams of yarn with a little bit extra for contrast heels, cuffs, and toes. And so I always have half of a skein left over, um, which is fine, um, but I sort of wish sometimes that that dyers would offer a 50 gram option. I know some um, self-striping yarn dyers um, are offering a 50 gram skein. And for me, for my foot size, that's a really great option because then I'm not left with a lot left over. Anyway, I do have 50 grams and I know that this is enough to make two 24 stripe socks. So my plan for some Christmas in July sock sprinting is to knit this uh, 50 gram ball into a pair of socks. Should I make them for myself or for someone else? Maybe I should make them for my husband. Oh, thank you for convincing me to do that. Um, you know what, Either if, it's, if I knit them for myself or I knit them for my husband, either way, it's the same amount of knitting. I'm still knitting 50 grams. <laughs> I might as well um, take advantage and make him a great big pair of 24 stripe socks. What do you think? Maybe that's a good idea because I already have a pair like this for myself. Thank you for that great idea. Now I just have to pick a contrast color and cast on. Cast on day is today, July 15th, uh, as I'm recording this. And if you would like to take part in knitting a pair of socks in a couple weeks, I think that's a very, um, I think that's a very realistic goal, especially if you're knitting maybe some shorty socks. Lord, I have plans to knit shorty socks too. I have so many sock ideas. It's crazy. I don't know why. I don't know how um, socks have taken over my sort of knitting mojo, but they have right now. Um, I think it's partly because a lot of people have been hosting things like um, a sock week where you knit a sock in a week or the sock sprint where you knit um, two socks in two weeks, um, or Christmas in July where you knit some Christmas socks. Um, I'm just really excited about mm, hand knitting socks, cranking out socks, knitting some shorty socks. Um, Summer Lee had a sale on her patterns and she makes the cutest patterns for shorty socks. So I have a bunch of shorty sock patterns now that I want to get going on. There's gonna be a lot of socks on this channel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not sorry. Anyway, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks to crank out a pair, not crank out, hand knit a pair of socks. I'll probably crank out some socks too. I would love to finish my inclinations shawl and then make some progress on my Ornata blouse. I don't know where it's coming from, but all of a sudden I have all this energy or um, inspiration to be knitting on the projects that I'm working on. And um, I have some plans to knit um, 
or I have some plans for holiday knitting as my family and I are going away next month. I also have plans for another fall sweater that I would love to cast on and I will tell you about next time. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope that where you are, the weather's beautiful and you're enjoying some sunshine and that you also have lots of inspiration to be making all the things that you want to make, whether that is a ridiculous amount of socks or dishcloths or sweaters or whatever it is you love to make. I hope in the next couple of weeks you find time to scratch that creative itch and do some fun things that you enjoy doing. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I will see you soon. Take care.